I'm Lisa Saunders. Welcome to my show. I'm really excited today because I have three fellow writers on here with me, and they're all write memoir pieces, which is exactly what I like to write. So I can't wait to hear about what they're going to do. And what's really fun about these women is that they're all admitting that they're over 60. <laughs> because this book is called What We Talk About When We're Over 60. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself quickly, what you did for the book. Okay, I'm going to start because, because I'm the editor. Yes. And this whole project started because my college roommate called me, and she had put together a book of 30 women from Atlanta and promoted it. She did, so she, it was already published. Hers she was already did. done. Okay. So she called me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing one for women in Connecticut. Well, you know, Connecticut is very difficult because you've got Fairfield County, you've got Pomfret, you've got little teeny towns, you've got Hartford. I mean, so what makes that difficult? It, it's because there are too many different kinds of cultures in, in the oh, Connecticut. Oh, actually, I did find that true when I moved here four years ago, that there's definitely different types of Connecticut. Oh, there's a big difference between Westport and Fairfield. <laughs> Even though it's just a tiny state. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so anyway, go and, ahead. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't committed. I didn't think that was a pull or a hook. I didn't think it was interesting. But I've always, not always, but lately, been interested in what's happening to women as we age. Mm -hmm. We're becoming invisible, just like Gloria Steinem told us we would. <laughs> and yet we are still trying. We're much younger acting and thinking and looking than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, I'll, I'll do this book with you, Linda, if, you just, if we can just do women over 60. Mm -hmm. So she collected about 30 women, or 15, and I collected about 15. But how did you get these women? Did you put out an ad, I no. mean, women over 60? <laughs> just tell me how you even found them. Um, I can't tell you exactly how uh, Linda found all of hers, but I think the same way. Your friends, friends of friends, sometimes relatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's quite a collection of women in this book, yes, let me tell you. Yes, it was a wide variety of women coming from different backgrounds, so I and was, was kind of curious. No, nothing about aging. The mm -hmm. only one that even comes close to talking about aging is Norma, mm -hmm. when she had a facelift, and then after she got it all done, realized that it didn't match the rest of her body. Oh my gosh, i got to read that <laughs> one. Very funny. <laughs> Like so far, I've only read your three, and I love them so much that Thank I can't you. wait to read them more. And it's just great because you're getting a a little life story in little snippets, so you can. Yeah, <laughs> I had I asked Suzanne because, and hers is called pushing the envelope, because I think Suzanne pushed the envelope before that we even d defined envelope. A uh, bit of a, a hippie when she was younger, and then had a child out of wedlock, before that was even. Before nobody, nobody, you, you would nobody actually have. It. Yeah, nobody so did that. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and just say your story? Sure. First, I'd like to introduce my friend Sherry Daly. <laughs> oh, I forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm that would Su be me. I'm Suzanne Golub, um, and uh, my story was about um, choosing to become a single mother uh, without being married, uh, and what it was like in the 1970s, um, and wasn't fashionable, wasn't popular like it is now. Uh, you pick up any mass media publication now and there's another celebrity that's having a, a child that's not married. Uh, back then it wasn't a choice, it wasn't an option. And um, it was very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So it was an opportunity for me to really look back and, um, you know, kind of examine, you know, what society was like and how I was treated and how my son was treated. Well, and your son was biracial, so that yes. made it still is. more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and that made it more difficult. Like, I could really relate to your, you know, people staring at your son yes. in the comments, because yes. I had a handicapped daughter, yes. and people stared at her for the 16 years she was alive. So I, and, but she at least didn't know people were staring at her. Your son, did he know? Um, I, I don't think comments, I, I don't think that it really bothered him until he was older. Mm -hmm. As a child, you know, I mean, he really didn't realize that anything was different because, you know, I, I didn't treat him different, right. and you know, he was my child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think uh, over time, people sort of got used to, you know, seeing him as the person that he was and not looking at the skin color. Right. And I think it wasn't until he was, you know, older in school that he really s started to feel that, you know, there were some differences. Like now they're, <coughs> that's normal. Now it's, you now know, it's normal. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> yeah. now, I mean, now they're saying that, you know, in, in 50 years, there's no longer going to be any white people because, 
you know, right. it's become... Your statistics were very interesting. I just found that mm -hmm. interesting to find out where the population's going, yeah. um, to, mm -hmm. to know when you were feeling friendless, you did have your sister-in-law, I guess you would call her sister-in-law. You weren't married, right, but... Right, right. Um, My sister out of law. Sister out yes. of law. Sister, yes, <laughs> I like that. Um, how she accepted you, and you yes. both had your own issues, but I just, you know, when, when it can feel, when you feel alone, and you have to be on social services. Right. Yeah, that's right. the other thing. It's I wanted to make sure you, you, it was a years. struggle for her financially, yes, as well was, as emotionally. It was and a struggle in every way. You hadn't finished yes. college. You it was a struggle in every way, and having some kind of a support system was the most important thing, and that's really what got me through, was really building that network of support right. so I could feel that I had the strength to deal with not being accepted by society. And over time, I mean, it tr changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. now, you know, yeah, yeah, how old is Jason? 38. 38. My son's 33. And I, ha I did the same thing she did. Oh. Yeah. I, I deliberately had a child out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. Yes, I paved the way for her. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that was so nice of you. Now, your story, well, I don't, we'll get to your story next, but I want to talk to you, Ingrid. Tell us a In little, English, please, not German. Yes, in English. I caught you doing that to, to our poor film person, Suzanne, but she got you back because she knew how she to speak sure German. <laughs> I, I caught that. So just tell us your story a little bit, your name, your story. My name is Ingrid Blum. And uh, my story is not quite as uh, extravagant as <laughs> yours. But, uh, <laughs> it's something that a lot of people deal with. In fact, after we have had uh, one of our readings, two people came to me and said, oh boy, I can so relate to this. And it is about proving mother wrong. Right, I, I so saw that. Your yeah. mother just didn't think yeah. you had it in you because you didn't have an education. Now, you grew up in exactly. World War II. How old after, were you? After, oh, after. Oh, after. Yes, okay, so yes. you were, all right. Um, I can't remember why you didn't get a good education when you were there. What was, what well, happened? Well, after World War II, everything was nuts in Germany, you know, nothing was where like you it make, should be. Right. And uh, what happened was that people would come out of the war and they would take anybody who comes around to, uh, to be teachers because there weren't any. So many people were killed that we ended up with, they n had never heard of a lesson plan or any of that. So, so my education was not great. And so you made it sound like you didn't even really have textbooks. And we didn't. We didn't. You right. know, and I was like, oh my gosh, I <laughs> and can't imagine. most of the teachers would talk about how horrible the war was and mm -hmm. uh, their life during the war. Some, some came from the front, mm -hmm. so they really had other topics here. But um, How old were you when you and your mother left um, Dresden? I was five. I was five. We, we, we went on the last train out of Dresden before, Germany, uh, before Dresden was totally destroyed. In fact, my father stayed and had a horrific time there. He was there during the bombing, and the stories he told later on, I don't want to relate to anybody mm -hmm. because they're just horrible. Right. But uh, we got out, and we, I grew up in the west of Germany, which was very lucky because, as you know, your history lesson, uh, Germany was divided wall, with a yeah. wall, and we were on the right side of the wall, thank mm -hmm. God. And so I grew up there, and then slowly I started my my school even in a little schoolhouse where there were eight. But because it was we ha we had flown to a little village where where there were very few houses and so on, so we had a little schoolhouse with eight benches. Mm -hmm. Every grade had its bench. Just like oh, in the picture yes. books, yeah. like in the picture <laughs> books, right? Yes, yes, yes. And we actually wrote on these slate uh, things. Nobody had paper and so on. And that's where I grew up, and <laughs> so I never thought I got a great uh, education. However, coming back to my darling mother, who wasn't really that bad, you know, she wanted, <laughs> he, she wanted everything right for her kid, uh, like all mothers do. But she never had a psychology lesson, which <laughs> could have been an Might improvement. Might have helped a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but she, w she would uh, tell, uh, tell me that I was dumb. My, my uh, brother was the gifted child, and, and I had problems. And uh, I got more and more problems, as I was told I had problems. And, and uh, one time I, I had a 
real answer in class, and the teacher told me, oh, look, a blind uh, hen can also find a corn sometime. Now, why did the I teacher mean, say that about you? Because they didn't know any better. They, there was, uh, it was just a, a they terrible time. They were trained. There was they a were trained. They were not trying. just to fast forward, you ended up winning Best Teacher in Connecticut of yes, German, right? Yes, yes, yes. That was yes. really great. It was just a great story. Of well, well, you know, what happened was, I tried to get out of the situation, and I did. I moved like 4,000 miles away <laughs> to be uh, without my mother, I guess. <laughs> and, and from then on, I was really interested in learning. And I mean, I've been overdoing it. I have like three masters. And, I, know, I, was and, <laughs> I was getting tired and, reading about all your degrees. I thought, how And I just do got do another that? one. I just got another one from a community college in persistence and uh, excellence in fine art. So, she got, so we can see she got an award, from. yeah. <laughs> oh, now, I love reading about yeah. how you make um, murals for a lot of people so that they're in their bedroom and they, they see a scene overlooking something. And I just, I think that's wonderful. Do you do that for, can people hire you to do that? Yeah, I love art. I love uh -huh. art and I get very excited when I see a big wall. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have uh, done quite a few of those and even, even for family or so. In fact, my whole house has murals everywhere. That's great. So and when you're eating in the dining room, what do you see? Uh, in my dining room, in my former dining room, I had a whole mural of Monet, Monet's gardens. Right, you didn't want to put people in it because you didn't want guests to, for dinner, right? right Something right, like that. Right, you said. Right, Too many right, neighbors. So right. That was right, so right, funny, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's just the garden. You don't have yeah, to look at anybody. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I try, so I've really loved art and I still take lots of arts lessons and mm -hmm. I paint. And uh, and having a very happy life now, you know, because I've uh, sort of found myself right. after all, and I figured out I wasn't dumb. Right. Wow. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're away from those words and just right. determined, you right. know. And I just right. like I said, when you end up winning these awards, I just met. I was like, wow, yes, what a great story. Now you, Sherry, I was <laughs> pins and needles. You yeah. went to visit the your ex-boyfriends, and you didn't just visit one. No, <laughs> I went on a tour. You went on a tour. <laughs> I thought I'd be like a rock band, you know? I was shocked. <laughs> I was so excited and nervous I know. as you were flying to California. I did, and I, was I did. I did. How each one, like, and the one that I thought you were going to really hit it off with just didn't feel right. You know, like, I, know. I don't want to give it away because I... People are going to read your stories and either see themselves or be shocked or be glad that they didn't have to go through that, <laughs> you know. Because, <laughs> like, whenever I have really, if I'm going through something really difficult, like when my daughter was very ill and I'd be very stressed, sometimes it helped to read other people's stories yes. as long as they weren't my story. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I would read about people in concentration camp. I would read about people getting a divorce. I would read about people who had problems other than mine so that I could think about them, worry they're, they're, about true. them. Those stories are inspiring in some, in some yes, way. Yes, they I are, mean, I because if somebody else survived that, then That's we can then I survive can, yeah. what we're going through. Exactly. We can find a way to be happy again. Um, and I think that, that we are too quick to uh, abandon old boyfriends, old girlfriends, whatever. Sometimes time and, and distance gets in the way, but there's no reason why we can't go reconnect. But I was shocked that the wives didn't mind. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> that the wives of these men they were, they were great. Um, the, the, the old boyfriend from high school, the one that I was supposed to marry, the wife did not join us to get together. Right. She didn't come. And you read the story, so you yes. know that and that was. That was kind of painful. That was the worst. And I, and I think about that one the one that stuck with me. I feel in pain about that I spoke one. to another reader who said um, one of the, the, the one um, scene that he remembers, I'm with uh, Haim, the old boyfriend that I had still had a little feelings for, you know, screenwriter, big, handsome Haim. And we're all getting in the car to go someplace. Him, his wife, and his three kids, okay? And, his, and the girl is uh, like a teenager girl. And there was some, some trash in the back seat of the car, and Haim said something about why is there trash here? And I, out of nowhere, clean it up. So <laughs> eager to help and so eager to please him. And that daughter just looked at me she and made that it. one, she got it. 
And then with that minute of, I understand, was really Well, I think how you just mean. make the point, like you said, we don't have to throw them all out. All these people yeah. make who we are, exactly. for good or bad. I mean, even if it was a horrible experience, we probably got something good or learned something good out of the relationship or the friendship. So I'd like right. to think that if we, if we loved somebody once, then, then all of the love doesn't go away. I'd like to think that. Maybe I'm just a hopeless romantic. But, you know, if we cared for somebody this much, certainly has to be something left. You know, they have to really <laughs> stomp all over you to make it all go away. But so in, in each of the stories... And they seem like major loves all of them. Oh, yeah, that's, like that's why I chose them. Random. <laughs> and uh, have they all read this, by the way? <laughs> Do they know about your book? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they do or not. Um, I did the one you thought I would catch up with, the, the, the one that I had a crush on when I was a little girl at summer camp, mm -hmm. George. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I found him on Facebook. And incidentally, his wife's name is Sherry. Oh, really? <laughs> and I emailed him in a private message. I mean, I Facebooked him right. or whatever they call that in a private message and told him about the book, but I haven't gotten any message back. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he doesn't know about it. Does he know you can get it on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should send him another note. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's available on and Amazon. tell me about the book cover. I love the book cover. I showed it to a bunch of people. I took it to a class I was teaching. Yeah, you told on. me. Yeah, because I love the cover so much. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you that I write for a, um, a, a regional magazine, which you know a lot of your viewers probably read, Coastal Connecticut. It's a really pretty magazine. And it focuses only on the, your little, you know, Madison and Essex shoreline. and Mystic and the shoreline, yeah. And they were going to excerpt, put a couple of theirs, of these stories in their magazine, and they didn't have any artwork because we didn't have a cover yet. They chose this. It's a stock photo. I love your it. The magazine chose the it. The magazine chose it. Mm -hmm. So my other, the other editor, Linda, and I said, yes, we loved it. So I showed this to one of, uh, my, one of my writers, Marge. And I said, Marsh, don't you love it? We just got the book. It just came out. I said, look, don't you love it? She goes, ew, no. I said, why? And you remember? They're, they're so old. <laughs> <laughs> Those women are old. We don't look like that. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> this reminded me of Calendar Girls. Did you see yes. that? Yes. Yes. That was I just absolutely. loved that movie. Yeah. That was yeah, so yeah. funny. I, and I love that you all tell your age in it. I thought, oh, this is fun, because usually yeah. I'm always curious, because I'm a writer, too. I'm yeah. always curious how old people are when I meet them, because then it helps me know what presidents they know, what music they listen to. And so yeah. I used to just ask, oh, how old are you? And yeah. now I'm starting to get people staring at me. And I, you know, I won't tell people how much I weigh. So I get, I'll tell people how old I am. I don't mind being, <laughs> I don't mind being 53. And I just assume nobody else would mind their age because you can't help their age. It didn't have anything to do with eating you, too Yeah, many you'd be cupcakes. surprised how many people. Go ahead. Yeah, well, part... Part of the reason, I think, for, for doing this book and getting the stories of all the women in their 60s is to really show that people feel good about their age. And, you know, 60 is not something to be afraid of. And, you know, 60 is, is 40 now. It's the new 20. Right? It really <laughs> is. And women is not. <laughs> well, but, you know, women in their 60s now are, you know, really active, involved, contributing members of society. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I remember my grandmother died when she was in her 60s, and, and I remember her as a very old lady. Mm -hmm. You know, back then, yeah. 60 yeah. was really old. 60 isn't old anymore. Which one of you says well, on there? about 70. <laughs> no, it's not it's old not. either. That's right. It's not. Which one of you says you still can still get in your wedding dress? I can't remember. That's Ingrid. Uh -huh. Ingrid. <laughs> I had to laugh. <laughs> Gosh, I'd be afraid to even try my... And you all look great. <laughs> Luckily, so. we like her. Otherwise, <laughs> we'd all get together and smother her with a fellow. <laughs> so did you read each other's work in the book? Absolutely. Of course. Of course. So. Okay. Well, I mean, I had to read yes. them all. Huh? <laughs> I had to read them all. And, yeah, well, you did a great job editing. You're I didn't have to do a lot of editing. I have to say that um, when I went to my friends and said, would you write for this book, some of them said, I'm not a writer, especially you. Mm -hmm. In fact, what you said just yesterday when we were taking a walk about... Oh my God! You were so intimidated. You not enough words, not enough words, and then. Well, I really thought of oh, I don't need that that work <laughs> on top of <laughs> everything else. But for Sherry, thank you. <laughs> it seemed like you were pretty honest 
in it. Like, I think there's one point you said you didn't want to tell your mother what you were doing in Israel because you didn't want her to worry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you were sowing some wild oats. Um, so some of, you probably didn't tell all, but you told a lot. You know, I, I felt like I got to know each of you. And I just think that that makes a well, powerful I think that, that makes writing better writing. Piece. Yes. Yeah, when you get to really visualize the person and get into their skin. And that's how I felt I got to know the three of you. And there's, there's, do um, you remember um, when, well, maybe you don't, maybe you're too young, when Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13 year old cousin? No. She's in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We got a 90, wait. how old is, um, in, uh, 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 Gilda? Gilda is nine, 98. 98. Yep. She came to one of our book signings in Westport. She's, I, Gilda is a hoot. Yep. And she's the one that, if you read the little bios in here, she's the one who likes to wear silly hats. Oh, okay. So whenever they have a big family reunion, they always dress her up in some stupid hat. I don't know. Gilda's <laughs> patience. <laughs> now, are, who, who goes on these little book tours that you do? Are, are you three or four? Yeah, or you more. just shake it up a little bit, or shake it up. There's, a, there's about five or six of us mm -hmm. that like that don't yeah. mind being in front of the camera, right? Or find an audience because I'm sure not everybody likes to be in front of an audience, right? So they're just as happy for you guys to go. Yeah, we've got. I mean, Leslie, you often go. She's the first one here. Mm -hmm. Men are like handbags. Mm -hmm. I didn't read hers because she didn't come today. <laughs> right. She did <laughs> not read come. Them all. She was supposed to come, but she, she bowed out. No, yeah, it's okay because I thought it'd be a little tough to have. That many on the that set, many, it's a lot. so it really kind of worked yeah. fine. But <laughs> we do readings at um, local bookstores, and that's turned out to be a lot of fun. But it's also wonderful to have uh, met more women who are in the same boat. Absolutely. And uh, by the way, some of those stories. Are quite not only a hoot. They're <laughs> very. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Very we have um, a yes. black stripper from <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> oh, I see. I can't wait. Yes, I yeah. that. There are yeah, she's she's really in her eighties now. She's Lottie the body. Lottie yeah. the body. Yeah. She's in her eighties, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. What else? Yeah. Oh, we have, oh, and then uh, we have the, the sex, sex article. The sex oh, chapter. The cougar, sex chapter. Right? A well, woman in her seventies. I saw the cougar. I didn't know until recently what a cougar was. What's a cougar? People laughed at me. I didn't know that's an older woman going after younger men. Which right? obviously yes. you're not one yes. then if you're, no one's called you a cougar. Well, I'm married. <laughs> oh, yeah, then they shouldn't. <laughs> I, would, I would hope they wouldn't You call better me. not. <laughs> but I just heard the term used for somebody else, and I just thought that yeah. was an interesting term. Well, what's a guy, kind of, what's an older man called, a lech? Or, I don't know what, I mean, I don't yeah, know. Cougar's normal, normal. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cougar yeah. is kind of a derogatory term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's a psychic, there's a farmer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A farmer, what? Farmer. farmer. She and her husband bought a farm. farmer. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And a woman who there's went to Spain and fell in love. And it's a really interesting mix of different women it, from all walks of life. Yeah, yeah. It, Linda runs her little um, talk shows and book signings down in Atlanta and that area. So, so she, that's where she lives. Yeah, she, tra yeah, now, she lives in Atlanta. Are, is everybody in here in Connecticut? Connecticut writers? Uh, we, uh, no, no, there, no, in no. here, in this book. No, in your book. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Half. No, half. Half. No, okay. but some of my, one, uh, Norma lives in Oklahoma, so she's not a Connecticut writer. But no, no, I know. Half, half of the women are from down south or the parts oh. of the country. Half are from this area. Okay, yeah, from the north. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind yeah, of. Okay, so it's yeah. kind of all over. Yep, it is. Yes. It but is all over. Um, there must yeah. be some concentration of people. There, there's a sure. there's a good sized group of us that are that are in Connecticut. Oh yeah. yeah. Now you're still teaching school. I'm right? still teaching school. And this, the reason we have you're yeah. off today is because yes, I'm off. So that, here I am. So that was that worked. What do you teach? I teach. Uh, I'm supposed to teach uh, English, but I say mostly I teach manners, <laughs> social <laughs> skills. Do you? What grade? <laughs> Seventh grade, and she oh. was a German teacher. Yeah, okay. For 31 years. 31 years. That must and have been great to be able to teach people. You, you, oh, yeah. You said it's how exciting. It was exciting to teach people mm -hmm. your language and customs, and mm -hmm. they were getting it from the source. And uh, what was nice is nobody could t tell me what to teach. So <laughs> I taught art, I taught opera, I, anything that I was interested in. And anything that a teacher has a passion for, the, the kids will join you. Right. I mean, they will absolutely right. be with you. Yeah. Now, how, did you try to have a, a unifying theme? I didn't really sense a unifying theme, but I didn't sense disjointed. I just felt like people there, were telling me 
something that was important that was, to them. Right, that was important to them that they had gone through. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's why yours was kind of su as a surprise that you're going to go visit boyfriends. They t talk about these difficult situations they came through, and yours is just hunting down boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's cherry. Like, well, that's okay, cherry. It's nice <laughs> <laughs> it <is> refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice mix. It is a mix, and I mean, like I said, there's everything in there from facelifts to, to boyfriends Stripping, to yeah. widowhood is in here to stripper. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't find a girl that you can, or a woman, that you can identify with but here, I don't know, to. I don't know who you are. Right? And there's stories that really anybody can relate to, and, but like Sherry said before, it's not about getting old, it's mm -mm. not about aging. Mm -mm. Um, just telling people, it's you're just about telling life experiences. Stories. And this yep. way, because you're all over 60, you can like have this cover work for you. I just love it. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> and if it's anybody's a interested, present. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's a, a great Christmas present. This is yep. what people should give everybody for Christmas, right? Absolutely. Because we're Absolutely. all going to be over 60 and, if we behave Hanukkah. ourselves. Yep. And, and yep. You're Jewish, right? I would Hanukkah. You celebrate Hanukkah. Yep. Okay, Absolutely. So, yep. You know, you give presents for any holiday. So. Yeah. Yep. You can get it on Amazon. Uh huh. And for lo and for your local viewers, Bank Square Books and Mystic has copies. And you just had a signing there. We right? just had a signing so how there. How was that? You know, it was really wonderful. We had a small group. We had a, we were sold out at RJ Julia, standing room only, yep. and we were pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that was yeah. fabulous. Yeah, and we were nervous because that was our first reading, mm -hmm. and we go straight from zero to sixty. You know, from doing nothing to RJ Julia, <laughs> and um, right the week after or two weeks after Hillary was there. And um, who's going to be at Bookhampton before us? Well, Somebody big. Hillary was also just there. She was just well, there. Well, we only have another, yeah. uh, about a minute or two left. Is there anything that you wished I had asked you? Oh, yeah. You know, ask me and ask them, where do we think older women are going to go in the next 10 years? Is it going to be different for us? Is it going to get better? Are we going to be more visible? Are we going to have our marketing and advertisers going to finally realize we're still awake and we still have a wallet? Well, I would assume so. It's baby boomer figures, you know. <laughs> We're all in that range. Yeah. Right, right, because yeah. the population so. is exploding. And it's it was exploding. just in the New York Times about the advertisement. Uh, yes, there was just a, a, a big article um, about Yesterday, how yeah. in the New York Times and also in AARP, but of course, you know, that's the biggest readership in every single publication. The biggest readership is AARP. Mm -hmm. And they had an article about how the advertisers are missing the boat. They just, yeah. we... Right, because, you know, a lot of us are still working. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, there are yeah. people in my stores that I see on their feet all day long, and they look to me like 80s and 90s even. You know, I'm just, yeah. everybody's working. Yeah, <laughs> we're living yeah. longer, right. we're more active. Um, and according you know, to Gray Advertising, um, women over 50 make over 90% of household, consumers. major household purchasing decisions. Yeah. So even if we're not the one who actually pays for it, we're the ones who are making the decisions. Yeah. So. Well, they got to wake up. And being retired, you have more time for yeah. shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Less money, but maybe not, right? If you <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think that women over 50, 60, 70 are going to become a powerful part of the population? I don't know, because time is up. So, oh, <laughs> so thank Saved. you so much for joining us on the Lisa Saunders Show. We look forward to seeing you next week.